If you know Mark, he doesn't do anything small. It's always way big. He dreams big, he thinks big, he inspires. Like every day waking up, he'll, he'll come upstairs and sing. That's how I would wake up in high school, by him singing. It would be like a musical. Funny, hilarious, and awesome. Mark always had this amazing, insane energy that would just, he would disarm you immediately with the, his humor. One of the greatest things I've taken from him was, you know, set goals and go after things that you love. I couldn't ask for a better dad, quite honestly. I love him so much. I became interested in the arts probably at a young age. My parents got a divorce, and I think I wanted to make both of them happy. So I would try to do imitations or do anything I could to add levity to what I would consider a pretty rough time. I had an English teacher in high school say, you know, you got very creative ideas, and you clearly are a class clown. Perhaps you should get involved in acting. Mark Fowser knew he was born to be an entertainer. His passion for acting led him to pursue a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity after graduating from the University of Missouri. And we were both apprentices at the Burt Reynolds Theater in South Florida. So Burt Reynolds was the George Clooney of his time. He, at, at age, I think, 40, top of his game, literally starts sinking millions of dollars in creating a dinner theater in Jupiter, Florida to educate me, to educate Mark, to educate 12 or 15 of us per year. While working as an actor at the theater, a young waitress caught Mark's eye. I remember I was walking backstage to go to the kitchen and he had a McDonald's bag over his head, maybe trying to get my attention, I don't know. He was just very um, funny and uh, I enjoyed getting to know him at that time. We got married, packed up our little station wagon, <laughs> and went cross country. So we moved to LA, and um, I'd never been there, and didn't know what to expect. Mark's career in Hollywood soon progressed to writing and acting with Burt Reynolds on the show Evening Shade. I was on that show for four years, and uh, it won Emmys and so forth, and I also was acting on Sequest, and it was just unbelievable to be on two network shows at the same time. Before long, the Fowser family came to a fork in the road. My lifelong dream to entertain, I felt that was what God wanted me to do. And then when I uh, was faced with the situation that both shows were canceled, my wife didn't want to live in LA anymore, and we both agreed that we want to raise our kids in the Midwest. So I, you know, against all instincts, followed what I was told to do and come back here. And it was really a tough, tough thing. Because of his personality, everybody loves him and he's being invited into every movie star's home and television star. And, and I kept saying, Mark, what are you doing? You're going back to the small town, man. And we, and he was hot out here. And he was um, an awesome husband to pick up and make a sacrifice to move back to the Midwest. The night before the Fousers left Hollywood, Something happened that no one was expecting. The truck was loaded, we were on our way, and he had sold his first movie, The Right to Remain Silent. So we were like, oh my gosh, are we doing the right thing? Are we doing the right thing? Here I am, a college degree, worked on two network shows, you know, worked with Academy Award winners, Emmy winners, and I'm here in Marion, Indiana, and I would wash cars late at night by myself. It was really humbling. My movie, The Right to Remain Silent, was nominated for two Ace Awards, and we won an Ace Award, but I'm washing cars in Marion, Indiana. Marion is a city of 30,000 people located between Indianapolis and Fort Wayne. Factory shutdowns and layoffs have left the community with economic challenges. A lot of people I saw that lived here was always going, why Marion? Why do you live in Marion? And I, I was asked that often, and I felt like, was it that bad? Why do you live here? Uh, why aren't you trying to help make a difference? Mark's opportunity to make a difference in Marion came when he was asked to sit on the board for Community School of the Arts. I think I started in 2001 and was in the basement of a church, and we held a fundraiser. We had $1,000 in our account. So it's like, I like this challenge. Mark's vision for the future of Community School of the Arts was to create a place where people of all ages could learn theater, art, and dance. After corresponding through several emails with the head of Nike, Mark ended up with a large donation to advance his vision. 
So that was a game changer. $250,000 for a school that had to have a board member pay for the phone line, that was a big game changer. So here's where the magic happens. You feel great as soon as you walk in the door, but you might see ballet on your right. There might be ceramics downstairs in the basement. You'll have hip hop classes, acting classes, music classes, guitar, piano, all kinds of dance. I mean, really some of the best dancing in the country. CSA is one of those uniting activities in our community. This is one thing that no matter what your ethnic background, your socioeconomic background, uh, gender, age, there's a place for you. Mark has encouraged the City of Marion to embrace Community School of the Arts as part of its family. It's not uncommon to see him working alongside volunteers as they make renovations on a new building. And Mark's vision for Community School of the Arts isn't stopping anytime soon. Well, my hope is it turns into an art campus downtown and that people around the state and the Midwest know of the great artists that exist here and what they're doing and how it inspires a lot of kids. The panels on the side of Community School of the Arts feature past artists from this county, like James Dean and Jim Davis, creator of Garfield, who inspire students to dream big. A lot of these kids, like me, would come from a single parent home. Some of them are, are abused. Some of them just need that positive place to know that they're loved, that there's hope, that there's a whole future out there for them, and they just gotta let their imagination soar. You know, a song, if they write a song, it might change the world. If they do a piece of artwork, it could change the world. Mark also works with the choir of autistic adults at Community School of the Arts. And when you're done, you step aside, and Matt, you step up. Okay, and everybody's gonna be great. And smile and happy, right? Are we happy? Yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah. Mark is like my favorite person that I really love because he's my favorite teacher that I can trust him to do things with me. And it means a lot of things to him and me both. Mark Fowler got me to say, yes, you can do it. You just gotta try. Oh man, he's a funny man. He's a wonderful teacher. I like Mark Fowler a lot. And one thing that Mark will say, and it doesn't matter if it's to kids or adults, he will always say, and he means this from the bottom of his heart, is who loves you. And they all say you do, because he does. Mark's commitment to the community of Marion is a value that he took away from his friendship with Burt Reynolds. In the height of his career, he said, look, I want to give back. I want to help kids. And I always asked him, why, why would you do this? Why would you do this for me? And he said, well, Jimmy Stewart did it for me. So I wanted to do it. And he goes, and I want you to do it. And he said that to me a few times. I thought, well, I'm never, how am I going to do it? I'm not Burt Reynolds. I'm not, you know. But in my own small way, I felt like I needed to do something. Burt Reynolds has even come to visit Community School of the Arts. It's very, very important because the arts are important. And I'm bowled over by the talent of this town. I think the perception of Hollywood is a self-serving mechanism. That's what I fought on when I was at the fork of the road. If I want to, I want to be the guy out there. I want to be the, the movie star. I, I'm on my way. Why should I give it up? Um, I think the reason you do this is an entertainer or a performer is there to serve they're there to sacrifice. Billy saying, I love you. Yes! Hey, baby! He's an awesome husband. He's a wonderful dad. He's a great community guy because he sat on a board in a small community to try to just give what he knew and give of his talents and, and to share his knowledge of his love of the arts. Yes, it's diverted me away from my dream, but it's hopefully inspiring a lot of other people's dreams and those parents come after and they go, hey, thank you, because my kid was so shy before. And now they're loved and accepted by uh, all the family at CSA and they're doing well. That's the greatest reward.